Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition stops stories. Prudent fiscal management by government has resulted in a lower budget deficit. Government to pay close attention to public financial management for 2019-2020. A more evidence-based approach to crime is taking shape in St. Lucia. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. Prudent fiscal management by the government of St. Lucia has resulted in a better budget outturn than expected. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, the Honorable Alan Chastney, in delivering the estimates of revenue and expenditure 2019-2020 on Wednesday 10th April, reported that a lower budget deficit of $68.43 million was achieved compared to the $163.92 million recorded in the estimates of 2018-2019. Honorable Chastney explained that this was due to the combined effort of higher than anticipated revenue and underspending of the budget. When we look at the performance, the revenue performance for 2018-2019, based on the actual data, as I've indicated, Mr. Speaker, on the 11-month period ending February 28, 2019, total revenue and grants were projected to increase by 27.82 million above the approved estimates of a 1 billion 176 to reach a total of 1.204 billion for the fiscal year of 2018 and 2019 this performance is largely influenced by higher than projected inflows from import duty service charge, VAT, income tax on individuals, and CIP receipts. In essence, the overall income of government across the board was higher. A surplus of $37.3 million was realized from the citizenship by investment donation receipts. Income tax for individuals and VAT are both expected to record a surplus of 5.5 and 3.4 percent respectively. Conversely, revenue from excise tax on imports is expected to have registered a shortfall of approximately 12 million or 9.9 percent relative to the target year. But this performance is attributed to the adjustments in the policy of applying a fixed rate of four dollars per gallon on fuel as well as a reduction in the number of imported vehicles. So the fact is, is that when the price, the global price of fuel went up, Mr. Speaker, my government's policy was not to allow the price at the pump to go up. And this resulted in us collecting a lesser excise tax than we would have if we had kept the $4 in its entirety, which would have then caused the price at the pump to have gone up. Tax receipts registered an increase of 5.17%, representing $54.12 million above the last financial year. Non-tax receipts amassed $69.26 million, a 10.1% increase over the approved estimates. The improvement in revenue outcome for the non-tax category is largely as a result of higher than anticipated receipts from motor vehicle and driver's licenses. Meantime, the government of St. Lucia is paying close attention to public financial management with a number of initiatives aimed at strengthening the various measures to be introduced, including legislative reform. This comes on the heels of the Caribbean Development Bank's Country Economic Review 2018 for St. Lucia, which indicated that public sector debt was estimated to be 67.8% of GDP at the end of 2018 down from 68.5% a year earlier. The reduction in debt was consistent with improvements in fiscal outturns. Governor General Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack, in delivering the throne speech on Tuesday 9th April, underscored the government's commitment to economic governance. Consequently, the existing Financial Administration Act, Chapter 15.01, will be repealed and a new Public Financial Management Act introduced. The new law will increase oversight of public financial resources, introduce best practices in monitoring and managing public financial resources 
and foster greater transparency and accountability. The Public Procurement and, As and Asset Disposal Act number 19 of 2015 will be brought into force, accompanied by requisite regulations as well as structural changes within the Department of Finance. It is ant anticipated that these actions will help improve procurement processes and enhance competitiveness, participation and confidence in the public procurement system. A centralized internal audit function will be established specifically with a view to protecting assets, reducing the possibility of fraud, increasing financial reliability and integrity, and ensuring compliance with applicable laws. A debt management strategy which aims to raise stable and consistent levels of financing at a minimum cost will also be introduced. The strategy and the debt, debt sinking fund, which is proposed to complement it, will be governed by a public debt bill which will promote transparency and accountability in debt management. Legislation is also required to ensure that discretion attends the management of the National Economic Fund established under the Citizenship by Investment Act No. 14 of 2015. To this end, a St. Lucia National Economic Fund bill is proposed which will deal with matters of administration, financial transactions, and reporting obligations. And that was the Governor General, Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack. A more evidence-based approach to crime is taking shape in St. Lucia, with the Central Statistics Department receiving assistance from international organizations in establishing a crime victimization survey. More from Janelle Norville. The Central Statistical Office is the implementing entity for the Crime Victimization Survey in St. Lucia. The workshop, according to Acting Director of Statistics within the Central Statistical Office, Sean Maffre, was quite productive as they were able to clearly chart the way forward, determining timelines and deadlines for set goals. The question was to ensure that all stakeholders that um, are related to the implementation of the survey, that we bring them together to ensure that they are knowledgeable I feel it's the involvement and um, to ensure that when the survey is conducted that they, they, they're on board and that it will be a successful collaboration between, with, with all the respective stakeholders. A 2012 UNDP Caribbean Human Development Report, Human Development and the Shift to Better Citizen Security, revealed that the crime situation was worsened by the implementation of ineffective policies that failed to adequately address the root causes of violence and crime, especially among the youth. Following investigations, the main findings indicated that robust policies and programs could not be developed in the absence of timely and reliable data. And that's where Carry Secure came in. Carry Secure UNDP's National Officer Miguel Trim explained the entity's role in the process. Our primary focus is on improving the collection and analysis of, of citizen security data, that is data on crime and violence um, in the region and working with um, national partners and institutions and agencies to um, build capacity in that area. Facilitator of the workshop, United Nations Office on Drugs and Crimes Research on Crime and Justice, Louisa Iriati, highlighted the thrust of the workshop. The objective was for the participants to get to know all the steps that involve doing a victimization survey, which is an instrument to complement uh, police records, administrative records, because uh, they discover the dark figure of crimes, that is, the crimes that are not reported to the police. So it's a very powerful tool for understanding crime statistics. A steering and technical committee have been established to drive the process of the adaptation of the questionnaire template to St. Lucia. This is expected to be completed within months. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The Government of St. Lucia has launched investigations into recent information being circulated in the public domain surrounding the Minister for the Public Service, Senator the Honorable Dr. Ubaldus Raymond. 
As a consequence of this initial probe, more information has come to light which warrants further investigations by the relevant authorities. The government, in seeking to protect the interests of the people of St. Lucia, wishes to give the assurance that these investigations will be performed without interference and with the utmost integrity. In furtherance of this, Dr. Raymond has proceeded on leave. The government of St. Lucia wishes to give the assurance that at the conclusion of these investigations, the outcome will be presented to the general public. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. What is money laundering? Money laundering is the concealment of the origins of illegally obtained money, typically by means of transfers involving financial institutions or legitimate businesses. There are three steps in the process of money laundering. One, placement. This is the movement of illegitimately obtained cash from its source into circulation through financial institutions. Two, layering. This is the act of concealing the source of that money using a series of complex transactions and bookkeeping tricks. Three, integration. This is the movement of previously laundered money into the economy, mainly through the financial institutions, and thus such monies appear to be normal business earnings. What is terrorist financing? Terrorist financing provides funds for terrorist activity. It may involve funds raised from legitimate sources such as donations, profits from businesses and charitable organizations, as well as from criminal sources such as the drug trade, the smuggling of weapons, fraud, kidnapping and extortion. There is an interrelation between terrorist financing and proliferation financing, which is the act of providing funds or financial services used in the acquisition, manufacture, or transport of weapons of mass destruction. How does money laundering and terrorist financing affect St. Lucia? St. Lucia can lose its reputation and international credibility. More violent and organized crimes and corruption. Penalties for the financial sector and loss of correspondent banking. St. Lucia will be evaluated in 2019 with respect to its money laundering and terrorist financing regimes. How can you help? Get involved. Learn about the threat that money laundering and terrorist financing pose to St. Lucia. And cooperate with financial and non-financial institutions when information is requested. Money laundering and terrorist financing are crimes with penalties of up to $1 million and imprisonment of up to 10 years or both. A message brought to you by the National Anti-Money Laundering Oversight Committee and the Attorney General's Chambers. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello and welcome once again to your segment focusing on youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The government of St. Lucia is placing emphasis on sports as an engine of growth and as a means of strengthening the nation. The sentiment was amplified by Minister Responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, recently as a symbolic groundbreaking for the commencement of the first phase of the Sporting Infrastructure Redevelopment Program took place in Sufra. Ladies and gentlemen, our mission is relentless. It is pragmatic and it is bold, as you can see. And it seeks to take sports development to a new height of excellence. When we incorporate what we do in with facilities in St. Lucia, with all the different programs that are being in institutionalized by the national lotteries of authorities that we are rolling out gradually, St. Lucia will be different. The sportsmen and women in St. Lucia will be happy. All our districts, all our sporting associations will be happy. All our communities will enjoy this. The program will feature upgrades of several sporting facilities island-wide. The sport of volleyball received a vital and critical spike with the provision of a team spike trainer.
that is expected to enhance the development of the sports at all levels in St. Lucia. Dennis St. Clair is volleyball coach attached to the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. We have a piece of machine there which is a spike, a team spike trainer. And it is something which was um, given to us by Lucilec, which we'd like to thank them for that, which obviously will go a long way in the development of volleyball. So as you could see, the guys, the, the guys are using the machine there at the moment. And you could see the control they get from that machine. Everybody's hitting the ball on the court. You could hear the, you could hear the contact that they're making. So it's all in the interest of the development of volleyball for the youth in St. Lucia. Primary school, secondary school, as far as it goes. Filling up the pool, the national pool, so that when the, in, when the national, when the association selects its national team, obviously it's going to be more difficult because there'll be more proficient players in the pool as they are at the moment. And this is just one step into the direction that we're taking in mechanizing, mechanizing the training of volleyball in St. Lucia. The team spike trainer is already in use at the VG Multipurpose Sports Complex. We leave you this weekend with a reminder that the Wayne Wee Memorial Lecture will be held on Saturday evening from 6 p.m. at the Financial Center Point Seraphin. The lecture is held annually as part of Youth Month activities in partnership with the Wayne Wee Memorial Foundation. It commemorates the death of Louis, who died on April 14, 1997, as a result of a vehicular crash. Dr. Winston Fulgens will deliver this year's lecture. And that's all from Youth and Sports Development this week. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Sufri Comprehensive School has received a donation from the international organization, the Joseph McCain Foundation. More from Anisia Antoine. The Joseph McVean Foundation has collaborated with the Ministry of Education and Zippy Shipping to donate clothing and school supplies to the Sufra Comprehensive School. Nerissa James of the Joseph McVean Foundation stated that the foundation is dedicated to improving education and providing sporting supplies for secondary schools around the island. So far we have partnered with the Sufra Comprehensive School to ensure that some of their services and supplies needs are met. Uh, at this point, we have donated a series of clothing items and educational supplies to the school with the intent that these services would be used for the most disadvantaged, disadvantaged students. Crescentia Combi, Vice Principal of the Sufre Comprehensive Secondary School, expressed gratitude to the Foundation for the donations received. We are hoping to target various aspects of our school's curriculum. Um, one of the main projects that we have is a co-curricular activity. They have, a mentor, they have embraced a mentorship program. The Students' Council is going to mentor the students of the Sufre Primary School. And we shall use some of the donated items that they have given um, in the, with some character dolls where they will be receiving some motivational messages, character building messages. And our students who are older, of course, will be mentoring those of the primary school. Combi explained that the clothing donated will be sold at a flea market at the school to raise much needed funds for the school. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. When the authority of the heads of government of the OECS and its other ministerial councils meet and adopt policies for the organization, they rely on the OECS Commission to transform these into action. The OECS Commission is the secretariat of the organization, a grouping of officials headed by a director general mandated to implement the decisions of the governments, but also empowered to make recommendations on the strategic directions of the organization. The OECS Commission organizes meetings, prepares budgets, conducts research, undertakes projects, negotiates for and represents the OECS member states. It is organized along several components. There are the commissioners from each member state who along with the Director General form the commission that oversees the work programs. 
there are also technical divisions with specialized units between them, as well as diplomatic missions in Brussels and Geneva. All these complement each other to make the OECS Commission the engine of regional integration in the Eastern Caribbean. The OECS has a proud past, and together, we are working towards a brighter future for all our citizens. For more information, visit www.oecs.org. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Monsieur, Madame, département qui n'est pas pour information en gouvernement cette fois-ci. Ça c'est GIS, à son BP, Télévision Nationale PIA, NTN, qui a présenté une nouvelle en Creole. Président Primus Hutchinson, travailler pour augmenter, faciliter le sport à souffrir, c'est un qui a placé en pile croyance un ministre pour jeunesse et sport, honorable Edmond Stéphane, du grand visitation ministre là, et l'autre ministre gouvernement pour grand épouvement en affaire sport et touristique à ville souffrir. Ministre Stéphane expliquer valeur ce développement ça là et qualité bénéfice là qui s'est facilité ça là qui a porté particulièrement pour les jeunesses. Ah ouais, souffrir. Nous avons mis un fil, un fil neuf pour le football. Nous avons mis un track only pour pour pour, pour athletics. Ok, nous avons fait un cricket ground, à rugby grounds. Nous avons mis des lights là tout le bagage. Ici, nous avons changé les lights là tout pour faire nation international standard, to bring it up to international standard. And all of that is going to take place. Tout ce qui est à peu près court. Avant l'année à finir. Monsieur Stéphane a annoncé aussi plaisir, plaisir à l'autre facilité sport qui a eu à recevoir même des gros services à la Oléon cette ci Nous avons un football field pour faire Denry, nous avons une youth academy pour faire um, Gozile, nous avons un lot de football field pour faire Miku North et Miku South, okay. nous avons un lot de football field pour nous faire un uh, uh, Swazeng. Ok, les cellules n'ont pas continué. Nous ni l'autre track pour mettre Mabuya Valley. Nous ni track pour mettre Gozil et tout. Ok, nous ni un autre track that nous a planné pour nous try mettre Marshall Ground et Mendo Fille Park pour mettre Go Football Fille là tout. So, bah, il juste commencé et puis nous pas qu'il double. Nous a continué throughout. Ok, depuis nous là, nous a continué à faire Fille cette lizzie. En parlant de ça, ministre des Affaires Culture et Guan Guec des comités sport olympiques sur cette liste. On a Fortuna Belrose qui a quoi qui plan pour augmenter et établir les facilités de sport qui est plus avancé en ce fouillet. C'est une grande action par le gouvernement par conséquent de l'histoire villa en développement de sport. Ce fouillet est toujours en place qui est produit Um, sportsmen et um, um, sportswomen. Um, moi, j'ai changé Adela, Adela Paul, qui était le premier um, moulin qui a gagné le Carifter Medal par cette liste um, en short put. Et pour souffrir, Hodia, um, qui a joué une qualité de facilité, ça, moi, je crois qu'il fait bon pour la commune, là, bon pour les gens Adela, qui ont fait service pour le pays. Um, actuellement, il y a Um, lot mamai um, uh, communes uh, ka, ka benefits um, ka joen benefits um, facility sa so nou bie kotan i ka efe bon pou send li si pou peyi ya ek of course pou jan soufouye abilite gouvernement pou pren pou bien manager ek directe a fe finans peyi ya l'okajone yon bije ki sorti trop plime ki yo te ka gade pou Premier ministre et ministre des Finances, Honorable Alain Chasney, du roi de l'Ivance, budget pour 2019 et 2020, déclaré que la quantité de l'argent que le gouvernement a dépensé vis-à-vis de ça, il a trouvé descend par 68,43%, comparable pour 163,92% en budget 2018 pour 2019. Selon Honorable Chasney, le gouvernement a découvert profit en valeur. 37.3 millions de dollars à programme CIP. Ça, c'est les étrangers qui sont venus citoyens par un écrose investissement qui ont implémenté en pays. En ligne de taxes, la tenue a augmentation de 58.12 millions plus haut que l'année passée. Le gouvernement a amassé aussi 69.26 millions de dollars en paiement qui fait sans taxes. Avec la majorité, c'est l'agence là. C'était en écrose de paiement des licences de l'auto. 
Ecclesias show fellow to Excusano at one but Nouvelle La Messie, Madame, Maka Messie au temps pour garder, Maka Bayon invitation pour jeune et puis encore, ça c'est l'engagé pour cette autre nouvelle à Coyol. Témoin, c'est une bonne fin de semaine et qu'après ça, nous avons pour Nisha. Merci on Pill Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Skies are fair becoming cloudy at times with a few showers. The Atlantic high pressure system will maintain a moderate easterly wind flow across the eastern Caribbean region over the next few days. A few showers are expected over the islands during the next 24 hours as shallow low-level cloud patches drift over the area. The tide for Castries Harbour was low at 3.55 p.m. and will be high again at 11.07 p.m. The tide for Vier 4 Bay was low at 5.22 p.m. and will be high again at 12.14 a.m. The sea is moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.52 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.